guys. Welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, you'll see this little infographic here I have on the thumbnail from H. Pearl Davies, better known as Just Pearly Things. She says, I've been uh, suddenly demonetized out of thin air with no warning at all for harmful content. And she's not able to make any money. Um, and they say down at the bottom, after uh, reviewing your channel using a combination of automated systems and human reviewers, we found that it does not uh, follow YouTube's channel monetization practices. You know, this is, um, and, and I'll actually get into the, uh, the FCC has a document here. I'm going to be going over how they're basically literally like controlling the internet now. We'll get to that in just a second. But I wanted to talk about this first, because this is what happens when a company does it. You know, when a company like YouTube says, hey, we don't like what you're putting out there. Uh, you can't make money anymore. You know, Pearly thinks, you know, Pearl here, she can go to, she's still on X. She's on Twitter. She can go to Rumble. Uh, she can probably go to Odyssey. Uh, she can go, you know, there's multiple sites she can go to. And not only have they, you know, at one point in time, they went after Sandman. Uh, and I'm going to talk about a bunch of red pill content creators here for just a second. But they came after Sandman and Turd Flinging Monkey, and they went after Undead Chronic, and they went after Coach Greg Adams, and then they went after Fresh and Fit, and now they're going after Pearl Davies. They went after Tate. You know, you may not agree with anything those people say, but they have the right to say it. Because, you know, Section 230 uh, is supposed to protect the, the web pages from what content creators say. But they're acting, these web pages are acting like publishers. What's going to happen when the government decides it wants to act like a publisher? And they can, they can decide who can and cannot have access to the internet and how fast their speeds are and how much they pay. Because that's where we're going. Um, here, Pearl said, uh, uh, and I just thought I'd touch on this because it's kind of funny. You know, when, when you want to be in the spotlight because you want attention and you want to be on uh, Piers Morgan and you want to be on TV shows and you want to get attention, there's going to be a spotlight put on you. What happens when that spotlight turns red and the big cane comes and drags you off the stage? You know, I, I, I think Pearl being on, on YouTube is fine. I think it, she should be monetized for her views because obviously YouTube shows ads on it. Um, and it's her job and she's getting content out there that's important. Again, whether you agree with her or not, if you're in the thick of things, yeah, you may get a high, a high follower and, and subscriber count. You may get uh, interviews. You may get your name out there. You may become very popular, and maybe you make a lot of money doing this. But I think the way, the best way to fight the, this culture right now, is just to be the guy up on the ridge, you know, with a win 300 and a scope, maybe a little silencer on the end of that thing, just quietly picking off people. You're not going to be the top dog when it comes to the score, but, but, but you're not also going to be targeted. You know, you're not going to be the one that everybody's gunning for. That's kind of the way I've always tried to do my channel, which is I'm going to get some information out there, but I don't like, I, it's not about being the biggest channel or, or being on news segments and, and being the most popular out there. I actually dissuade that, you know, I, I, I don't like that kind of attention. And this is part of why. Because when you become targeted, you're going to get whacked. She says, yeah, I was just demonetized on YouTube with no strikes, zero warning, zero explanation. And, that's just, and, that, and then she's like, sign up for my email list in case YouTube goes away altogether. And we're going to find out if she's really about the message or if she's about the dineros. Because, you know, if she goes to Rumble and no one follows her over there, is she still going to put out content with 50,000, you know, views, 50,000 subs or whatever? Or is she going to give it up because it's not uh, profitable for her anymore? We're going to find out real soon. But what happens when the office of commissioner, and, and this he's actually a, a Brandon Carr, uh, he was the uh, office of the commissioner of the FCC. And he is, as the office of commissioner, being the commissioner of the FCC, he said, he wrote a letter saying, this is too much. Like the government should not be taking over this much of the FCC. This is frightening. That's something everybody needs to be aware of. So let me, let me read down through what he says here a little bit. I'm going to jump over the, the political stuff as best I can. 
Uh, Carr opposes President Biden's plan to give the administrative state effective control of all internet services and infrastructure in the U.S. He says, so last month, President uh, Biden, and, and I'm skipping this top part because he's basically calling out Biden for being a mouth-breathing houseplant. Uh, he says, um, let me highlight this here. Uh, and that's that did not highlight that in yellow. That That makes literally no sense. Why did you do that? Okay. All right, whatever. Uh, he said, so last month, President Biden gave the FCC its marching orders. The president called on the FCC to implement a one-page uh, section of the 2021 Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, Infrastructure Act, by adopting new rules of breathtaking scope, all in the name of digital equity. Uh, for the first time ever, those rules would give the federal government a roving mandate to micromanage nearly every aspect of how the internet functions, from how ISPs allocate capital and where they build, to the services that consumers can purchase, from the profits that ISPs can realize and how they market and advertise services, to the discounts and promotions that consumers can receive. Talk about central planning. Needless to say, Congress never contemplated the sweeping regulatory regime that President Biden asked the FCC to adopt, let alone authorize the agency to implement it. None, uh, nonetheless, the commission will vote next week on November 15th. They voted yesterday. They voted 3-2 to adopt this. So it is now in action to put President Biden's plan in place. A draft of the FCC order implementing President Biden's plan is available here, and they have a link to it. I oppose the plan for several reasons. Uh, this plan hands the administrative state effective control of all internet services and infrastructure in the country. Never before in the roughly 40-year history of the public uh, internet has the FCC or any federal agency, for that matter, claimed this degree of control over it. Indeed, President Biden uh, calls for the FCC to apply a far-reaching set of government controls that the agency has not applied to any technology in the modern era, including Title II common carriers. The closest analog would be the heavy-handed rules the FCC applied to the Ma Bell telephone monopoly during the height of the New Deal era, a copper wire period of time when it was hard to distinguish between the government regulator and the telephone provider. Now, what does this mean? The easiest way I can think of describing it is imagine if you have all your Android phones and you have your Apple phones and whether it's, you know, Samsung and LG and uh, Google phone and Apple phone, you have all these different design devices. And with this device, you can use 5G and 4G and 3G uh, data transfers. And you can use uh, Verizon and you can use AT&T and you can use different cellular providers that connect to different towers. And you can pay different plans and you can have different cell phone plans to meet your own individual needs. What it sounds like is the government can now mandate the pricing of those phones and the pricing of your plans and how many minutes you get uh, for free and how what you get extra and your connection speed and everything will be, will be boiled down to what the government deems as acceptable. This is getting rid of free market practice. This is, in many ways, what communism does, is it takes away the free market and it puts the government in its place instead. And so it's not free market anymore. It's a government-mandated government service. The problem with this, as we've seen over the last couple of years, is look what the government does to dissenters to people that it disagrees with or that disagrees with the government. You know, they've debanked uh, Nigel Farage over in the UK uh, and uh, uh, Alex Jones here in the United States. They take away banking services from people. And the banks say, well, we just, there's no mandate. We just don't think we're in line with your policies. And so they drop them. What happens when the government decides, hey, you know what? We don't want you using VPNs anymore. That's the FCC. We don't want you. Um, we don't want you having too much time on the internet. We don't want you to stream. We don't want you to be able to uh, uh, connect to some of these websites anymore. They can mandate it right out of existence. 
They can put in firewalls so certain content is not available to you. Now, normally you'd say, well, that's up to your ISP or that's up to the website or that's up to the digital provider. That's all going to be under the FCC now. That's a big problem. And if you say, I'm fine with that because, yay, Joe Biden. Okay, now what happens if Trump gets in and Trump says, oh, we're going to change some of these laws. Anybody that's, you know, aligned with Antifa, you can't have access to the Internet anymore. A lot of people see the problem is people are always in favor of this when it hurts their enemies. But when their enemy gets in, in, in power and then starts using it against them, then they're very concerned. This is the problem of having any of these rules in place in the first place. Uh, they say, um, let's see, but do not take my word for it. The text of the order expressly provides that the FCC would be empowered for the first time to regulate each and every ISP, which is Internet Service Providers, network infrastructure deployment, network reliability, network upgrades, network maintenance, customer premises equipment and installation, speeds, capacities, latency, data caps, throttling, pricing, promotional rates, uh, imposition of late fees, opportunity for equipment rental, installation time, contract renewal terms, service terms, uh, service termination terms, and use of customer credit and account history. Mandating arbitration clauses, pricing, deposits, discounts, customer service, language options, credit checks, marketing or advertising, contract renewal, upgrades, account termination, transfers to another covered entity, and service suspension. Alex Jones says something against the government. The government says to his internet service provider and all internet service providers, you cannot give uh, access uh, to the internet to Alex Jones. We deem him as dangerous. Depersoned, removed from the internet. That's it. Um, and if they don't want to go that far, they say, okay, well, we control contact, uh, contract renewal terms. Uh, we don't like what you've been saying on the internet. So it's going to cost you $500 a month to talk on the internet. Now you can say, well, this is, come on, man. Like, who's going to do that? Look what our government's done over the last few years. Who's going to take away the right to assemble in church and pray? Well, the government did. Who's going to take away your rights to get in a car and, and, and go down to the grocery store or, or to go to the beach or to go swimming in the ocean? The government did. You know, all during the lockdowns. They took away a lot of your rights. They're not going to have any problems. You just go, click, no more internet for this person today. What if they say you can't be anonymous on the internet anymore? You must ve uh, verify yourself if you want to talk on Twitter or 4chan or Reddit or YouTube. You have to use your real first and last name, and you have to provide photo ID, and only then uh, can you have an internet access account. And then you do that, and then you say something they don't like, and they go, oopsie doopsie, you're not allowed on YouTube and the internet. It's very possible. And it, then it takes it out of the hands of YouTube and Twitter and, and these other companies to shut you up or not because you won't have internet access because the government can control that. And so if you can't even purchase internet access, like you can't, you know, I, like I have to pay internet with a credit card or a bank account or something. You don't get it for free. What happens if they deperson you and you can't even buy internet access anymore? It doesn't matter if Twitter censors you or YouTube censors you because you won't, you won't even be able to make it that far onto the internet. You will literally be cut off from the world's communication. This is very, very frightening stuff. Now, they, they have an exhaustive list here. And, and he says, like, this, this is not, I'll, I'll read the last paragraph and then I'll leave it there, but he says, as exhausting as it is to read that list, the FCC itself says this is not an exhaustive list. The Biden administration's plan empowers the FCC to regulate every aspect of the in internet sector for the first time ever. The plan is motivated by an ideology of government control that is not compatible with the fundamental precepts of free market capitalization or capitalism. But it gets worse. The FCC revert, reserves the right under this plan to regulate both actions and omissions, whether reoccurring or a single instance. In other words, if you take any actions, you may be liable. 
And if you do nothing, you also may be liable. There's no path to complying with this standardless regime. It reads like a planning document drawn up in the faculty lounge of a university's Soviet studies department. Please look into this if you'd like to know more about it. But remember, this is the commissioner of the FCC. The commissioner of the FCC himself is saying, this is an overstep. This is way too much. This is a problem. So understand, as much as I'm, you know, kind of poking it pearly here for getting demonetized and not being able to earn money, what happens if not only can you not earn money, but you can't watch the news anymore because you don't have the internet? Or, or you can't get the news anymore because you don't have cable TV. And you can't, even, you can't even listen to an app on your phone to listen to the radio because you don't have any internet service providers. You can't text because you don't have any data plans. You can't, you, people do not understand where this goes. That if you get on the wrong side of any administration that wants to shut you up, th th there could be a lot of problems. Now, yes, does this mean there's going to be lawsuits? Yes, but everything can't be lawfare because they'll write this up. It'll pass. Uh, they'll take actions against somebody. Somebody will deem it not fair. They will sue, and it'll take six months or a year or two years to get through the courts. And in the meantime, all these people will be without Internet. And then when the government says, you can't do this, it, uh, well, excuse me, when, when the judicial uh branch of our government says, you can't do this. This is against the First Amendment or whatever amendment. You can't do this. What will Biden or the administrations like this say? Oh, okay. Well, we've written a new bill that's just slightly different, and now we'll push this through. And then when they get sued on that, it's another two years in court, and then they slightly change it again, and they can tie this up for, for forever. This is how they keep screwing with you. They did the same thing with the jabs and kicking people out of work. They say, you can't do that. You can't shut down churches and you can't lock down things. And, and so this bill or this law is criminal. Like it's, it's unjust. You can't do it. And they say, okay, well, we cancel that bill. But here's a new bill with slightly modified words that basically does the same thing. And now we put this through. Oh, you don't like it? Well, you have to sue us. Now we'll have two years until it gets through the courts again. This is corrupt regime puppet, uh, uh, puppet government type crap. And you know, everybody that cheers this on is fine with it until it's used against them. And it will be. It will be. Trust me with that. Pay attention to this stuff, guys. Know what's out there. And for those of you that aren't in the United States, say, well, it doesn't matter to me. I don't get my internet service provider. Well, the data that goes overseas has to go through American service providers. So if you're getting something from Twitter and that Twitter server is here in the United States and an ISP, you know, internet service providers, IP address that sends all this data over to wherever or sends it over to the servers overseas, our government will now control that. And if they just determine, hey, you know what? Uh, we don't want anybody hearing from the Palestinian era area of the world or the Israeli area of the world. We're just going to turn those ISPs off. No more data gets to the United States through that route, through people posting in those countries. They'll have to go through a VPN or they'll have to send it to another country you know, roundabout way to get it there. And then they can say, well, VPNs are illegal. We control it. If an if a internet service provider deems that you're using an, a, a VPN, we're going to terminate your, your, your contract. Like, no more internet for you. This is Orwellian 1984 stuff. And if you're not afraid, you should be. Because too many times people say, well, I don't do anything wrong. All it takes is the wrong meme, the wrong comment, the wrong video, and eventually the wrong thought, and the thought police will come for you too. 
Grim times, my friends, grim times. Um, as always, though, if you are not a supporter or at least a member over at betterbachelorlocals.com, get over there. Because right now, even if YouTube did scrub me from the internet, I have all my videos backed up over on uh, betterbachelor.locals.com. We've got forums. People are having discussions on topics like this. Uh, we're talking about the things that mainstream doesn't like. And for now, it's a really nice, safe, quiet, private corner of the internet to have these discussions. And, and it is my lifeblood of the internet. You, that's why YouTube's secondary for me now. A lot more stuff is happening over on betterbachelor.locals.com. So please join me over there today. Please become a supporter. It's like five bucks a month, $4 a month if you support me for a year. Help help keep my content available and help me pay my bills uh, so I don't have the, the Pearl Davis treatment done to me anytime soon. All right, guys, we will leave it there, and I'll see you in the next one.